In this video, I'm going to talk about orbital diagrams and how to draw them and how to place the electrons within each orbital. So let's start with nitrogen. So nitrogen has an atomic number of 7 and an average atomic mass of 14.01. Now, in order to write the orbital diagram or to draw it, first you need to identify the electron configuration of nitrogen. Now, I've created a separate video on electron configuration. You could search for it on YouTube. The electron configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So notice that the exponents have to add up to the number of electrons in a nitrogen atom. Now, keep in mind, in an atom, the number of protons, which is 7, is equal to the number of electrons. In an ion, they differ. So once you have the ground state electron configuration, then you can draw the orbital diagram. So this is the 1s energy level, this is 2s, and this is 2p. p always have three orbitals. So what you want to do is you want to fill each orbital from the bottom all the way to the top. So the first orbital has two electrons, and you need to put opposite spins. Now, once we get to the 2p orbital, each of these orbitals, they have the same energy. And so as a result, they're known as degenerate orbitals. Now, when you fill in degenerate orbitals, you need to fill them up one at a time with parallel spins. So once you put the first arrow in the first orbital, you should not put the second one in the same orbital. Rather, the next one has to go in the next orbital, but with parallel spins. So if the spin is facing upward in this uh, orbital, then the second spin should be parallel to it. It should be facing upward as well. And the third spin will be doing the same thing. So nitrogen has three unpaired electrons. A substance with unpaired electrons is said to be paramagnetic. It's weakly attracted to an external magnetic field. A substance that is composed only of paired electrons is said to be diamagnetic. It's weakly repelled by an external magnetic field. So nitrogen is paramagnetic. Now I do want to make one small correction. I mentioned that you should write the electron configuration before filling the orbital diagram. And it turns out that you really don't need to write the electron configuration. If you want to, that's cool, but you don't have to. So I'm going to use magnesium as an example. It has a mass number of, or an average atomic mass, I believe, of 24.3, and the atomic mass is 12. I mean, the atomic number is 12. So an atom of magnesium has 12 protons and 12 electrons. So all you need to do is fill the orbitals until you reach a total of 12 electrons. So the first energy level is going to be filled. So that's two electrons, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Don't forget to add uh, electrons one at a time once you get to uh, orbitals that have the same energy. So that's 7. We have 8, 9, 10, and 11. Now, to put the 12th electron, you don't put it here. You have to fill the lower orbitals first. So always fill the lower energy levels first before you jump to the higher energy levels. So this makes 12. And so that's how you can fill the orbital diagram of magnesium. Now, if you want to write the electron configuration, you can literally see what it is. It's 1s2, and then we have 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s2. So that's the electron configuration of the magnesium element. But as mentioned before, you don't need to write that. You can just fill up the orbital diagrams until you reach a number of 12. So now it's your turn. Go ahead and try this one, phosphorus. By the way, is magnesium paramagnetic or diamagnetic? What would you say? 
Now, magnesium only contained paired electrons, so therefore, magnesium is diamagnetic. Now, an atom of phosphorus has 15 electrons, so we're going to fill the orbital diagram until we reach a total of 15 electrons. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that's it. So it doesn't take much to write the orbital diagram of an element. Now what about an ion? Let's say if we have the sulfide ion. How can we draw the orbital diagram for that ion? Feel free to try it if you want to. So what we need to do is determine the number of electrons in the sulfide ion. Sulfur has a mass number of about 32 and an atomic number of 16. So an atom of sulfur has 16 electrons. So the sulfide ion has how many electrons? Because it has a negative charge, a negative 2 charge, that tells us that there's two more electrons than protons. Now sulfur always have 16 protons. The number of protons identify the chemical element. So the number of electrons is going to be 16 plus 2, so sulfur has 18 electrons. To calculate the number of electrons, it's simply equal to the atomic number minus the charge. So the atomic number of sulfur is 16 minus the charge of negative 2. 16 minus negative 2 is the same as 16 plus 2, and so that's going to give you 18 electrons. So we're going to fill up this orbital diagram until we reach 18. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So it's completely filled. So the sulfide ion is a diamagnetic since it contains only paired electrons. Now what about a positively charged ion, like a cation? Let's use the aluminum plus 3 ion. Go ahead and draw the orbital diagram that corresponds to this ion. Now based on the periodic table, aluminum has an atomic number of 13. So an aluminum atom has 13 protons and 13 electrons. The aluminum plus 3 cation has 13 minus 3 electrons, so it contains 10 electrons. So this is going to be 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s. So we're going to fill it up until we reach 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's it. So this is the orbital diagram of the aluminum plus 3 cation. Now you want to be careful with transition metal ions. Let's use the cobalt plus 2 ion. Cobalt has 27 protons. I'm not sure what the mass number is, but this is the number that's important. Now, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to subtract 27 by 2 and get 25, even though the cobalt plus 2 ion does have 25 electrons. You need to be careful. Notice what's going to happen if we do this. Now, we need to go to the 3D level. So after 4S, we're going to have 3D, and the D sublevel has 5 orbitals. So let's go up to 25. So this is going to be 2, 4, that's 7, and then 10, 12, 15, 
18, 20. Now that's 25. And if you would stop at 25, this is the answer that you would get. But for cobalt plus 2, it shouldn't be like this. The electron configuration for cobalt as an atom is it ends in 4s2, 3d7. But now the cobalt plus 2 ion, what you need to do is take off two electrons. Now, you're not supposed to take off two electrons in a 3d sublevel. You're supposed to do it from the highest energy level. So this should be 4s0, 3d7. Now, if you subtract 2 from this number and got 25, based on the way we filled it, this would be 4s2, 3d5, instead of 4s0, 3d7. And so when you're dealing with transition metals, or transition metal ions, I should say, it's best to write the configuration of the transition metal than for a positively charged ion, take off the corresponding electrons from the highest energy level. And then once you got the electron configuration for that transition metal ion, then you could uh, fill the orbital diagram. So we're not going to put any in the 4s level, and then we're going to put 7 in the 3d sublevel. And so that's the one thing you need to be careful with when dealing with transition metal ions. So make sure to take off the electrons from the highest energy level.